So welcome back friends to the homestead. It's been very interesting to me, some of these tool test comparisons that we've been doing and how the cordless tools have been dominating uh, the traditional corded tools. We had, uh, of course, the first test, we had the uh, cordless uh, skill saw against the worm drive and it absolutely crushed it twice as fast, I think the speed it was cutting. And then we did the chainsaw, which really, really surprised me that an electric chainsaw could beat a professional gas chainsaw. And so a lot of suggestions have been coming in. And one of the uh, most common ones uh, that, have, that I've received this last few days is the reciprocating saw test. So what we have today is I have my old faithful DeWalt. Uh, I actually have two DeWalts here, corded sawzall. Now I have had, I think, four of these. When we used to do, uh, when I had a wrecking yard, we used to cut up lots of Jeeps and bodies and things. We used these and they were really super tough. The, the thought back then of, of having a replacement that could be cordless uh, was, was not even in the realm. So on the other side, we have the FlexVolt 60 volt, which, which the big batteries, uh, which is a really close competitor. I'm wondering and very curious to see which one is going to be the better cutter. So I have a little test set up in the shop. Let's take you in there. First, we'll take a quick look at the tools and then we'll set the timer and we'll find out who's gonna come out on top. See if it'll be a three for three uh, for the cordless tools. Let's take a quick look at the contenders here. So we've got the traditional, the corded, what's this one, the DW304P, whatever that means. Uh, this is a gently or lovingly used saw that I've had for a long time. Well, what I'll, I'll tell you, what I'm finding out with the cordless tools is when I get a cordless tool that replaces the corded, I don't use this anymore. I have not used this saw uh, since I've had this one. It's just the convenience factor. Um, it's so much better. I can go down and have a remote area. It's just one less thing to worry about. It's so much more versatile, especially if you're climb, climbing, climbing up on ladders. Not to have to deal with that cord is worth a lot. But they're very similar in design. They're very similar in shape. Of course, the cordless, we've got the brushless, the 60 volt flex volt. This is the good one, uh, the brush with the brushless deal. Only main differences that I see is, you know, from using them is that ergonomically, this one's better. It's got a bigger handle. You can get better purchase on it. It's got a light on it, which I really like. One thing I don't like about all these cordless tools, and I fear that Safety Sally has gotten to the manufacturers, is all these, these safety switches, which make it, you know, you wanna use it and then you're in an awkward position and to deal with the safety switch. One thing I really kinda of like about the older tools is they didn't do that. I wish we could just get rid of these things. I just don't think that they're necessary. But with that being said, I just thought of something that does happen with the cordless tools is, have you ever thrown them in the toolbox and hear them going, especially your drill, because the trigger gets pulled? Maybe, yeah, maybe I need to rethink that, but uh, that was just, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Let's go over to the bench and let's see uh, what we can do here. All right, chalked up on ye old workbench vice here is a very dry and hard four by six Douglas fir that's been sitting and drying in here for many years. And what we're gonna do is we'll do a double cut here. We'll do a cut down and then we'll come around and do an underside cut. We'll do two cuts and we'll run the timer and we'll see which one's on, which, one's on, which one comes out on top. As far as the blades go, the blades are identical. These are uh, brand new. They're both the same blades. So they're DeWalt, just DeWalt brand, aggressive wood cutting blades. And so there shouldn't be any advantage to either side there. So let's start with, what are we gonna start with? Let's start with the corded first. We'll set the timer up and then we'll go through with the cordless and then we'll find out. Normally I do these tests outside and there's always been some concern um, and, and I think it's, it's an adequate concern that the corded tools are at a bit of a disadvantage because of the extension cord and some voltage drop in there. So we're gonna plug directly into a 30 amp circuit here with the provided cord so there should be no concerns there uh, and, that will, and that will take care of that problem. All right, here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down and then up and I'm gonna press as hard as I can. I'm gonna try, not to stall the tool, I wanna keep the blade speed up, but I'm gonna really press it as hard as possible. So, let's set the timer and three, two, one, go.
boy, that's hard piece of wood right there for fur. So that took a long time. Uh, I don't think we need to do the uppercut. Plus, that's going to be, it's just going to take too long and it's not necessary. But uh, yeah, pretty good cut. That was as hard, pushed it as hard as I could. Uh, it was uh, starting to bog down a little bit, but uh, that's it. That's a pretty good cut for a reciprocating saw. Okay, same piece of wood. And I'm going to, there's a little knot right there. I'm going to move over here to clear that knot so we don't have to make it equal. Okay, start the timer in three, two, one, go. fast. That's got a lot more power. A lot more power. I don't know what the time difference is on that, but I can tell that that cut way faster. What was interesting about that was you notice that the I had to move my hand around and push down harder because I couldn't stall uh, the, the cordless. I couldn't stall it uh, because it had so much torque and so much power. I had to put all my weight on it. Even then I couldn't stall it. It was just kind of limited by the cut. I mean, it just continues to amaze me how powerful these cordless tools are compared to the old school, you know, the older school ones. You would think that it would be just the opposite. And it's not even, I mean, what I'm starting to find with these things is it's not even close. I mean, look at the skill saw video that we did. I mean, that, that skill saw, that cordless skill saw cut over twice as fast as, as a big professional Mag 77. I mean, that was a total shocker to me. Uh, but this was way, way faster. I could, I could just tell. Just the torque from the thing is incredible. And I was kind of thinking, I was wondering, you know, if, if it, because there's such an interest in so, so many different guys are using uh, the cordless tool, I think that more, probably more research is going into them than the traditional corded tools. I, I don't imagine there's a whole lot more innovation or as near as many resources being put into them. And I think that's probably why these things are just getting better and better and better. And the battery technology, it seems like it, it continues to increase and it's, it's really cool. Kind of an interesting thing. I, uh, this weekend we uh, uh, loaded up the van and we went up with some friends up to, uh, up to Mount Fuji um, and camped at the lake and we were uh, we did some amazing dirt bike rides I've got some I got some video that just blow you guys away um, and uh, Canoeing and all of that and we were talking as the the three of us or four of us were sitting around talking about bikes and the future and the technology and all that That uh, one of the guys said that was our group leader said, you know what? I just bought a new uh, Husqvarna this year uh, Basically the same bike as mine. He goes. I think that this is my last gas uh, motorcycle and I said are you what are you talk, talking about? Are you talking about electric? He's like, yeah, I, I think that the next bike that I purchase is going to be electric. And I'm, it's what's so funny is that we were uh, riding a couple weeks ago and I, I heard the strangest sound. It was, all I heard was like tires on gravel with this motor whining. And two guys rode, rode up on these beautiful, I think they were Alta, Alta dirt bikes that were 100% lithium electric. And they were, this blew me away, and, and uh, they're starting to compete in races with these things. And the, the, to be able to have something that you don't have to have gasoline, you don't have to deal with um, uh, engine problems and rebuild, rebuilds and all that stuff, uh, and the lightweight and the maintenance is, is super appealing. So it's, very, it's a very exciting time to live. And if, if we can get that battery technology to a point where we can get these longevities. I'll tell you what, I mean, if I could buy a, a motorcycle that I could go out and ride for four or five, maybe six hours would be nice. Um, I, I would strongly consider it too. So kind of interesting. It's exciting to see. I'm uh, just a big fan of this. So these, uh, this, these electric tools, they just are so convenient. Um, and I'm really looking forward to our chainsaw review. We've got the big DeWalt. Um, they're supposed to be sending that out. Uh, and then we'll put that up against some gas saws and we'll see see what's what. I also would like to do, one, one concern I have with those things is how many cuts can you get? Talking about the chainsaws. So what I'll do is we'll do a full tank of gas on the Husky, we'll do a full battery charge on the, uh, on the DeWalt, and we'll do a long rip test down a log until they both either run out of gas or run out of battery charge. And that's what I'm really interested in seeing is how far those things will cut uh, on a tank of gas or on a charge. Uh, that's going to be um, 
that's going to be very, very interesting. So thanks for watching. I've got a bunch of fun stuff coming up, um, unpacking the van and a bunch of things I want to share with you, some lessons learned. Uh, Jack and I uh, both came off the mountain with uh, pretty good injuries. <laughs> so he, uh, on the first day right out, he uh, smashed his foot, uh, even wearing motorcycle boots, and um, his toenail came off. So he was hobbling around. That was the end of his ride. And then uh, the next day, I uh, hit a, something and I broke my pinky toe. And then uh, an hour later, I sprained my wrist. And so we're all hobbling around here. Mrs. W took a bad digger. Uh, and scraped up her leg. So I got a lot of use out of my first aid kit. I'll tell you that for sure. I'm going to have to restock it after all of the injuries that we had. So I'll try to roll in some footage of that dirt, dirt bike stuff and some pretty scary stuff we were on. And uh, we even saw mountain goats. It's pretty cool when you could go up and, and ride with a mountain goat. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.